couple years ago, I was watching a uh, NFL football game, and I'm not much, really much of a sports person, but something actually happened actually before this game began that has stuck with me for all these years. And as I recall, the Philadelphia Eagles, and they're coached by Buddy Ryan, I think he's now deceased, but they were playing a team I don't recall. And apparently before in the week leading up to this game, there had been a lot of talking going on between the coaches in the press. Back then it was in newspapers and on TV. And um, it had degenerated to the point where Buddy Ryan had made some disparaging remarks about the other coach's size and apparently his problem with weight. And uh, if any of you remember Buddy Ryan, he wasn't exactly a small man himself. But I remember... <laughs> I remember in the game, before the game started, the commentators were discussing this back and forth and they get down to where they're talking about the insults that Buddy Ryan was casting. And at that time, the camera zooms in on the sideline with Buddy Ryan standing there and he's wearing his traditional green Eagle sh sweater, which quite frankly was stretched a little tight and was not exactly flattering. And at that point, one of the commentators quips, he says, well, apparently there's no mirrors in the Ryan household. And, you know, that's always stuck with me all these years. You know, you may have heard something similar I mean, years past and you know, times gone by. If you saw somebody that was kind of disheveled, people would say, well, I guess that guy doesn't own a mirror. And so I hope you'll humor me a little bit this evening, not talking about physical looks, but trying to make a spiritual application to that. And it actually, this came back to me uh, this summer when we were studying Bible Bowl because there's a couple of things I noticed in our study of Mark. In chapter 4 and in chapter 8, Jesus talks about people who see but can't see. And then in chapter 7, Jesus has a discourse there with the scribes and the Pharisees and he uh, quotes from the Old Testament. He says, this people honors me with their lips but their heart is from far from me. He's classifying these people that think they're one way, but they don't see reality. That's not really the way they are. And so, you know, the thought came to me, it's, you know, is that possible? Could that happen to me? And I hope you'll ask the question, you know, could I be classified in the group that has eyes to see, but I don't see? And I think something differently of myself um, than I really am. And I think the answer, coming back to the example of the mirror, the answer I have to that is, I think definitely it is. It's a very big risk that that could happen to me. Um, I know from personal experience, there have been days that I have come home from work after being gone all day, went by the mirror and discovered that I cut myself shaving that morning. And I was walking around all day with, you know, a spot on my face. Or I've been here at worship and I get home and I take my jacket off and discover that one of the buttons had not been buttoned on my shirt all morning. You know, that's usually when I say, you know, Lori, why'd you let me walk around like that all morning? But just as it can happen physically, I think the risk is even higher that it can happen to me in a, in a spiritual realm. Um, and you might imagine, you know, when I, we talk about, well, how could that happen? The verse that probably comes to mind is in James chapter 1, verse 22 through 25. And I want to read that and then talk about a couple of things that I see in here. So in starting in chapter 20, in verse 22, but prove yourselves doers of the word and not merely hearers who delude themselves. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he's like a man who looks in his, at his natural face in a mirror. For once he has looked at himself and gone away, he has immediately forgotten what kind of person he was. But one who looks intently at the perfect law, the law of liberty, and abides by it, not having become a forgetful hearer, but an effectual doer, this man will be blessed in what he does. Here in this verse and then continuing on in verse 26, I see two things here that could be the danger that I might have. And the first one is in verse 25 where he says, you look intently. Okay, we have to look intently. We can't be distracted. We have to have focus in looking in the mirror of God's word and comparing it against ourselves. You know, I, it, when I thought about this, it dawned on me that I spend a good couple of minutes in front of the mirror at home, but in reality, I'm brushing my teeth. I'm not looking in the mirror. And when I do look in the mirror, it's just a quick glance and then I'm out the door. That's how I get home in the evening and have a spot on my face. 
The same thing can happen. We might find ourselves here. We may spend a lot of time in front of the mirror, but are we distracted? And are we just taking a quick glance and then heading out the door? I think the, it's something that we should think about. I think it's, it's a real danger that could happen to us. That could be the problem with the people in, uh, Jesus talked about in Mark. They see, they have good vision, they have good eyes, but they're not really perceiving. They're not taking the time. They're distracted by the things of this world, other things that are going on. Maybe they just, they just wanted to be in the presence of the mirror. They just wanted to stand in front of the mirror with Jesus and worry about other things. And I think the, the same thing can happen to me. I know it does physically. It can happen to me spiritually too. The other thing I see here in James, if I continue on in verse 26, is if anyone sees himself to, thinks himself to be religious and yet does not bridle his tongue but deceives his own heart, this man's religion is worthless. So I, you see here people who they're seeing what they want to see. They already look in the mirror with a preconception of what they want to see. And I think the danger, uh, there's a danger that that could happen to me. Physically, if I look in the mirror, and uh, ladies, maybe you have this example, but if you're looking in the mirror and you're so focused on your, your great makeup and you don't even notice that, let's say the conditioner is still caked in your hair, then that's a problem, right? That's not something, that's not a result that you want. That's a case where you're only looking at the things that you want to look at. And we, we can have the same problem I may be focused in the mirror and, and just so enamored with my faithfulness and attendance and you know, maybe my charity that I just I completely miss this big blob of greed or hatred or you know, evilness on the side of my face and I walk out the walk out and don't and don't pay attention to it. Or even more of a risk would be that when I'm looking at the mirror, I'm not even looking at myself, you know, maybe I'm looking at an angle so I can watch the other person. I can see, I can look in the mirror and I can apply it to someone else all day, but I don't see it as it applies to myself. So I think those are two things and when, I, when I think about this, that just as the same as it can happen in my home that I can misuse a mirror and I cannot get the, the right effect out of it, the same thing can happen spiritually. Here in James, we see that our mirror use, if you will, our use of a mirror is going to be reflected in our actions, okay? He talks about two different people here. He talks about, in verse 23, a group that are not a doer, and then later he talks about an effectual doer. And so here in James, a person that effectively uses a mirror spiritually, it's going to be reflected in their actions, and so, you know, you kind of wonder when someone sees me walking around and they see my behavior, are they saying, I guess that guy doesn't own a mirror? Or worse yet, in the day of judgment, if, you know, if I'm standing there and the comment is made, well, I guess there's no mirrors in the Stevens household, meaning that there's, you know, no mirrors of God's word that we're being reflected on. And so I, I just appreciate you humoring me with this example, but I hope you'll think about it. You know, tonight if you go home and you, know, you brush your teeth, you're getting ready for bed, you know, think about that there is, in James, there is a direct spiritual application of this in how we view ourselves um, against God's word. So tonight um, we'll have an invitation song, but if you, you know, if you look in that mirror, and, you know, similar to Adam and Eve, you find yourself, you know, naked and dirty with sin, then that's, that's a problem. And, and I would encourage you to, to consider and to, to remedy that problem. You know, we're told that we're, those that are baptized into Christ, that they've put on Christ, they've clothed themselves in Christ. And that's the first thing we need to see when we look in the mirror is we need to see clothing. We need to see that we're clothed in Christ. And so you can take care of that tonight by putting your Lord on in baptism. And I hope that we'll all, you know, spend more time, as it says in James, intently looking in the mirror, and intently not just looking in the mirror, but it, it, looking at our reflection and how that mirror reflects on us. And if we have things in our lives that are, are wrong, things that are blemishes, whatever they may be, that we'll, that we'll consider that and we'll make the appropriate remedies, repent of those things, and 
and continue on. So if there's anything that, uh, any needs that we can help you with, I'd come forward as we stand and sing. <laughs>